Fit for Life Radio, coming at you with episode number 63. I'm your host, Gary, here with co-host, Will. What's going on? And we are pretty excited about today's podcast episode. We, we would argue that it's, you know, the root of one of the most important factors when it comes to your health and fitness. And, you know, a lot of times... As we've mentioned before on the show, how everyone gets caught up in the extremes and, you know, performance stuff with fitness and, you know, or being like super shredded, yeah, super like, shredded. You're looking at models, you're looking at, how, you know, CrossFit pros, powerlift pros, but really separate from that, you know, that 10% of the population who dives into those hobbies and sports is, you know, the fact that most people, especially in America, are dealing with you know, obesity. So we found a recent study from UCLA researchers, and it's just really good. It tackles basically the subject of stress and obesity. Which we could say is really kind of the root cause. I mean, stress is so broad, but, like, that's really, Mm -hmm. you know, where it comes from. And a lot of people will attest to this, right? You know, if you've gained some pounds, people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm overstressed. That's probably one of the most common Things Absolutely. we hear and see is just people being overstressed. Like life changes happen, kids, mm-hmm. you know, job or their sleep changes because of their job and kids and, and things like that. And so like a variety of life situations can, you know, can bring it on and it's, you know, has consequences. And the sad part is there's a subpopulation of coaches and fitness people who think it's as easy as just discipline and willpower. Yeah, like, just try, just to try this, harder. You know? um, which it, you know, it's way it would more, be great if that's what yeah, the easy solution was. But It's way more complicated than that. Yes. To simplify now, though, I would say it can be boiled down to environment, right? We, ha- we have these things because of the human environment we have created now. So I think we'll reiterate this you've probably heard it before but just it's important and you know for this episode if you step back and realize that as humans not too long ago hundreds of years the problem wasn't we need to stop eating so much food the problem was are we going to get enough food and you have to understand that we evolved over thousands of years seeking food and the problem being, are we going to have enough? So we evolved with mechanisms to make us make sure we eat enough. So that's why when you get high-calorie-dense foods, you want to eat more. Your brain has reward centers. You know, you get dopamine hits to say, hey, this is good. We need these calories. Keep doing this. That, and so that was the environment that we lived in was not always having enough. So we naturally died it. Right, Because sometimes you just wouldn't find food. You didn't get it all the time. Or you had a bad season with crops. So it was built in. No one would have to force herself to eat less because it naturally happened. Yeah. So with that, that's why it's healthy right, to have an energy balance and uh, be at a lean body composition because that was the, the circumstance that we evolved under. That's you know what our body is used to, what it kind of wants really. So... That environment, so just the environment of our natural hunger cues and how food was available. And then you fast forward to today, so that's just the food side of things. Now let's also do the stress side of things with our environment, right? So separate from food, yeah, so back then, if you had a little, if you got food for the day and you had some shelter and warmth, you were, you were, you were feeling good, right. right? We had fight or flight mode. So we are trained all of a sudden. You know, something happens, you know, there's a danger, your heart starts pumping, adrenaline starts pumping, now you're in fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Once that's over, you go to rest and relaxation. Nowadays, with the con- we're constantly bombarded, we constantly create... We're just overstimulated. Yeah, we're overstimulated like with worry. You know, you over. could have work problems, and then your, your body doesn't know the difference of if it's life or death, or it's really you're just maybe waiting on an email or something. Yeah. So now you're stimulated. Every email might be put you in fight or flight. You're worried all the time. Your kids got your their report cards coming in. You're you looking have, at a bright screen. We'll say yeah. all day because we all have phones and computers and TVs. Mm-hmm. and The like, news is flashing. Oh, God, yeah. The, you know, 
if you keep up with current events, things like all of those things just create this constant, you know, wave of stress throughout your life. And not even saying that you don't have to like feel this huge acute stress to be stressed is another thing that mm-hmm. I think is, is misunderstood too. Like you could be living with, you know, we'll say a low level of constant stress and that's still going to negatively impact you because yeah. you aren't coming out of that fight or flight mode. Well, it like becomes normal our normal, would. our baseline. Yeah. Your, your baseline so you don't is, even realize it is stressed. Yeah. Is danger. So mm-hmm. your body reacts to that. Then people wonder why they can't fall asleep. Why they don't sleep well. Yeah. Why they have food cravings all the time. Why am I anxious? And we're just stuck in this stress mode because of the environment that's been created, right? This rat race, the just all the stresses of life. And then again, food's easily available, cheap, highly processed, highly palatable, delicious calories. Feels good when you eat it. Exactly. So for one, you have to give yourself some leeway and realize, you know, the problem's not you. So, you know, a lot of times everyone gets hung up on that. Like, I'm a failure because... Yeah, I suck. I'm not as yeah, good as... I overate person. cookies, right? When, look, they're out there, you know, you're stressed. These are the environments that we're born into. Like, we're not controlling this now. A lot of people, you know, would probably like to just be born into a low-key, chill, yeah. you know, Hawaiian island where you catch your fish and relax most of the day, Right. That's, but that's not what we're born into. So it's not your fault. This is the environment uh, that we are operating under. So with that, you see a lot of people are, you know, gaining weight, getting obese, which comes with negative health consequences. Yes. And we know that stress can lead to weight gain. We just don't really know how. And the uh, researchers from UCLA kind of have you know, looked at past studies and their own and kind of piecing things together and it, it, some good information. So that's what we're going to share, kind of break down some actionable steps. For one, as we just discussed, stress does lead to obesity, right? It's kind of a, a loop and it affects us in various systems. So one is just our cognition. Another is our physiological state, behavior, and then our biochemistry, right? So we'll break them down. Your cognition is basically kind of how you function, your self-regulation. Uh, your ability to make decisions, things mm-hmm. like that. So obviously when you're stressed, you're going to make different types of decisions, right? Um, then this kind of leads, and they all, all these lead, it's a loop, right? They all they connect all, together. They it's all not connect like, together. Yeah, they're not independent of each other. <laughs> the other is... Physiological, so that's your stress hormones, your reward circuit, fight or flight that you're always in, and and how it, you know, how that affects you, um, you know, your body physically. Yep. And so, think physiologically. That's like kind of the science of how our bodies work. So, mm-hmm. really, stuff that that you can't even put a finger on, but it's there. It happens. Your microbiome's one, so that's your gut health, which affects our mood drastically, big time. That's your second um, brain. So that's two, three. Behavior. This is the stuff that's going to seem most uh, kind of like the most thing you can have an impact yeah, on. The, the most the, actionable yeah, thing that is feels your real, and that's your behavior. So how stress affects our eating, physical activity, and sleep. So those are going to be the ones that you kind of have the most control over. Then the last is biochemistry. So that's your hunger and appetite signals. Which again, can- a lot of that's going to be affected by, and again, it's all a loop. So I, I say it's going to be affected by the type of food you eat. But also the type of food you eat are going to be affected by the general stress, right? Yep. And maybe also by your, we'll loop it back around to cognition. So now all mm-hmm. of a sudden, the decisions you're making are going to lead to the food you eat, which is then going to lead to your appetite and hunger signals, right? Ugh. So even just talking about it's it. It's all kind of webbed together. Like all of them, you know, affect each other. Everything. And that's why it's not simple. It's not as simple as... And we'll, for example, we're starting a nutrition challenge at our gym this week, and we have people track their calories in my fitness pal, and you, which is simple, but we're we're not. And the point we do it isn't just be like, this is the answer. Have more. All you need to do is know exactly what you're eating and, and log it and be more disciplined. That's not the point. The point is for something like tracking calories is you're going to have to be aware. And then hopefully, so say, yeah, you have your calories, you eat your food, you're at your limit. Now, all of a sudden, you have to have some internal focus 
on all the other reasons of why we eat. And a lot of people, that's why they don't like to track their calories or journal their food, right? Or just bring awareness to, you know, their their actions. Because it gets uncomfortable. You have to face all of that. To address all these other issues. So, yeah, you may, you eat your calorie limit, you have some food, and then you have to sit there and be like, man, I want more and dig deeper. Well, why do I want more? Is it because I'm bored? Is it because I'm sad? Is it because I start thinking about maybe emotions or stressful things in my life, and it's easier for me to not think about those things, and I can just go eat something, now I'm getting a dopamine hit, and I'm getting these feel-good rewards in my brain, and I'm basically, yeah, dulling myself from my actual feelings. And you just continuously, you know, And it's a loop, so then that's that loop. It can be as simple as you you eat to avoid feeling feels. Yeah, (laughs) and not even that they're, you know, some super traumatic thing. Like, it could just be... You know, as simple as, you know, someone, you know, yelled at me earlier or, you know, I got in trouble at work, which, you know, isn't, you know, life ending. Yep. But if you don't address it or, you know, or, or process through it, like that adds up. And a bunch of those, you know, that that weigh on you creates a really hard to get out of loop when you're, you know, mm-hmm. eating to cover all of those things up. So while we kind of cover stress can equal obesity and then these different interactions realize so to boil it down and keep it simple our behaviors so some key things to realize that you can control and again this is a loop and they're all interactive but I like to actually start with sleep right so that's my favorite get better sleep hands down get more deep sleep because a lot of times if you are getting lack of sleep you're going to have more food cravings because if you kind of think of yourself like a cell phone, right? You don't recharge all the way. Your body's going to look for energy from, oh, I need more calories. The quickest sources. From the quickest sources. So then you have more food cravings. And then because you're sleepy, you're going to be less active the next day. You're going to have less neat, uh, which, you know, fidgeting and walking maybe. and Or you may be in not as good of a mood to want to go exercise, right? Which then the loop of, you know, being active helps you sleep better, right? So now because you don't get good sleep, you don't prioritize it, then you're maybe not as active the next day or you don't have an active lifestyle, you don't go to the gym, then that feeds into poor sleep more and more. Um, But So let's go get good sleep, which hopefully leads to being more physically active. Follow that up by making better food choices and eating appropriate portion sizes and amounts, right? So, you know, the food, the sleep, and the activity, those are ultimately all things we can control. Like, we can, for the most part, control when, you know, that we go to bed in a timely fashion. The food we put, we put and eat, the amount of food we put and eat into our bodies. Um, and then our activity, you know, are we doing anything physical? So, by doing these things, by eating a little better... Getting to sleep, being active, you're going to help yourself help this loop. You're going to change the the whole system, you know, for the better in general. Now all of a sudden you you will have less stress. Now you may not be able to control your kids' stress that they bring to you. Maybe maybe from school, your work, if you hate your boss, if if you're under a lot of time crunch for work, you're still going to have those things. But now all of a sudden by addressing your sleep and your food, you're going to help improve your physiological kind of uh, interaction. So, you know, your gut micro, microbiome is going to improve, your stress hormones are going to improve, your biochemistry, so your hunger and appetite signals are going to improve. So by, you know, taking action on those behaviors, you can improve your biochemistry, your physiolo- physiological factors, and you, you're helping yourself greatly right with that with the stress and the amount you're having so that is going to be what you want to focus on and give you the best chance to avoid obesity get out of obesity or focusing on those actions all right so hopefully and and again i've uh if you want to make it even simpler pick a bedtime try to get to bed on time i think that's one of the biggest factors yep like having this the same bedtime every night because like most people look at their phones before bed and it's easy to get carried away and not feel sleepy because well you're looking at a bright screen and your brain's super stimulated so um having you know a we'll say a bedtime 
ritual or whatever you want to call it, routine, I think is really, really beneficial. And it, it, it may not be beneficial after, you know, one day, but after, you know, a, a week, you'll realize like, okay, well, I kind of feel better. I know personally, if I don't get enough sleep, I'm crazy hungry the next day and I could eat like a horse and not be satisfied. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. So, like, for me, sleep is... Uh, generally my, you know, we'll say keystone habit um, to keep me on track because otherwise I'm just going to want to eat everything in sight. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's how I tackle my big problem. Cause if I do that, everything else usually falls into place and it's not even an issue. Um, so I think that can be, you know, very, very helpful for, for anybody that may be, I don't know, overwhelmed with thinking they have to do everything too, you know, like, Oh my God, they just listed all these things I need to address. Well, just go to bed earlier and get enough sleep as best you can and just try to stick with that. And then a lot of the other things get easier because like I said, the system's just kind of operating a little bit better when you have that sleep. So you're just setting yourself up to, you know, maybe tackle your other stresses a little bit easier because we've, you know, plugged a very big hole, so to speak, in that whole uh, system. Yep. And now we're going to throw another monkey wrench in there. So it's complicated enough. You have stress, which can affect all these interactions, which then can lead to obesity. But then you can take it a step further. Then obesity can lead to more stress. Yes. Right? So then, so then it becomes an even worse endless loop because the obesity leads to kind of like a weight stigma. You feel bad about it, creates more stress, and then you start, then you already have your habit loops from before and you start and cycling through. And it's amplified through. by that, and, which yeah. I think a lot of people don't um, quite get that, you know, those are other things. It's not just as simple as like, oh, you just got to eat less. Yep. Well, you know, when you're being bombarded by all these things and you feel a certain way, like it definitely makes it a lot harder to, you know, make a change. And again, that's where the more complicated it feels, the more overwhelming it feels, the more... <laughs> oh, we're not laughing at uh No, we're not laughing at the problem. There's squirrels on the yeah. the the metal roof and they're just having a ball right now and, it, and we're, we're it's trying, too hard to ignore. Trying to fight through it, but <laughs> mm, see, we're stressed. These squirrels know, are stressing us out. <laughs> can y'all hear that? That's uh that squirrel. If they so, can, there's a battle going on on the roof. Alright, so so we're talking about the weight stigma associated. The weight, yeah, so you, then it's just an endless loop, right? And then you start to feel more and more helpless. Uh, when in actuality, what can you control, right? So we'll go back to behaviors. Um, and uh, we completely acknowledge and want you to acknowledge it's not as simple as say, oh, I'm just going to start tracking my calories and I just need more discipline. You know, or I'm going to do, you know, uh, the Whole30 diet. So I'm going to eliminate all these foods. But in, oh, we can unpack that, right? Why don't most diets work for people, especially these like rigid, strict diets? Because they create more stress. 
Yeah. Right. Right. If right from the beginning something is like you cannot have this, 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 this and this, you only must have these things. You're stressed from the beginning because you're thinking, I got to avoid all this stuff. And then when I do have it, or I'll never get to have it again, this is so stressful. And then if you have it, you're like, oh my God, I just blew I'm, everything. I'm a failure, right? And then now all of a sudden you're putting certain foods on a pedestal and you're creating another loop. So I think the squirrels are coming in, man. <laughs> Either the squirrels are coming in or there's a person on the roof. <laughs> all right, so... You see that problem. That's why we do like to start with like journaling, tracking, even calorie counting, you know, with the app, because it doesn't put um, food kind of this holistic, magical halo effect on foods, right? Or Which we do foods. know there's some, some foods that are quote unquote going to be better, right? If you eat a, a bunch of apples, you're eventually going to feel full. There's more fiber, they're higher, uh, lower calorie density versus apple pie, right? Which you take those same apples, you cook them down, you add flour, sugar, butter, highly processed foods that are going to make it more delicious and easier to overeat. So yes, you can say an apple is better than apple pie because it's going to help you eat less and not jack up those interactions as much. It's not going to mess up your physiological biochemistry, which again is your uh, reward center, your microbiome, your hunger and appetite signals. So Yes, whole foods are going to help your hunger and appetite signals the most. But you can, if you keep your portions right, if you eat the total amount of food, if you have awareness, you can have apple pie, right? It's just about having a slice within the day, um, within your kind of daily allotment, weekly allotment, portioning things correctly. So you don't knowing that you get to have a slice of apple pie for a lot of people helps eliminate that stress. Yep. Yeah, because you're not thinking like, oh, my God, I'm never going to be able to have this. And if I do have it, you have this, like, battle with yourself over, you know, eating it versus not eating it. And, you know, they're both bad to you. And I don't think it creates a good environment um, in your own head. So, All right. So realize that, I mean, these are all, even as we discuss, we come up with new angles of stress, yeah. right? So, like, dieting is a stress. Uh, we can even, which we won't get into this one, but because we talk about how you need to exercise, it helps your sleep. But eventually, you can do too much exercise. Oh, yeah. Exercise is a stress in and of itself, too. Um, and we've mentioned that before. Yeah, I think it's, we've done an episode yeah, on your, that, but it's, it'd be good to revisit. Your elastic load is all your stress. And there's some good stress or some bad stress. It, it's This isn't differentiating between that. It's just, yeah, you have a total amount of stress that you have to recover from. And if you're not. And if you're not... Again, then some of those hormonal, uh, physiological things take place, right? So realize there's a balance to it, but it's all intertwined, you know? And it's not just that you need more discipline or there's something wrong with you. That stress and obesity, uh, they're kind of hand in hand. And, and a lot of times addressing your stress before, you know, I just need to eat less food is going to be the way to go. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hand setting yourself up for the best, um, I guess, best time or place to change. Because if you have like a crazy amount of stress and it's not addressed and it's just pushed to the side, it's always going to be there and you're always going to be able, trying to climb over the entire thing or fight mm -hmm. back against that giant wave all at once. Versus, you know, if you just take little, you know, smaller steps to you know, to help yourself get better, you're going to be a little bit better equipped to want to handle your stress and it'll probably reduce your stress overall too. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, a lot of people feel the pressure to like, <coughs> basically, um, like me. take on the world. Like you got to do everything. You got to go, you know, beast mode and you got sleep is for the week and all this stuff. And, you know, you're, you're really kind of digging yourself into a hole and it might not feel like it right now, but you're going to hit a point where, you know, you look up and you're like, damn, like I've really got myself deep and yep. it's hard to get out of that. So don't feel like you have to do a million things with your fitness and your nutrition and all this stuff at once. Like just change one thing because realize what it what it took to get where you're at and all of the stress and all of the decisions that it took to get there and that you can't just undo that very quickly. You know, you have to slowly unravel that or slowly, yeah. you know, peel the layers off versus 
you know, trying to do it all at once because that's mm-hmm. usually for 99% of people, it's not going to work. Yeah. And realize if you're, you know, most of the people we work with are about 35 and over. And mm-hmm. that's why you see like a 20 year old, 25 year old, and everything's easier when you're younger. And a big part because you have less stress, yeah. right? It's easy to give a 23 year old macros and say, and they have no issues because there's not a lot of stress maybe around food and things like that. Yeah. So it's important to realize and kind of two key takeaways are sometimes you have to look beyond just a meal plan and eating advice. Like that it's good. Say someone gives you calories or macros, you know, you can do that, but understand that may not be your issue because that, yeah. you may not, you may have trouble following these things because you emotionally eat, right? Well, why do you emotionally eat? Well, that's what you have to find out. Mm-hmm. That's what you have to dig in with. Maybe you've had a job you don't like for 10 years and the minute you get off, you're, you're excited and then you don't want to think about going back to work the next so day. You just eat. So you just eat, right? Or well, drink. that's going to get in the way of you hitting your macros, right? Or hit, hitting your calories. Then the good thing is when you track those things is you're forced to face that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, Which is not the most fun thing in the world. And, you know? and that could be really what's holding you back. It's not some food that you eat. It's not because you're eating it's carbs. It's not that the plan's wrong, yeah, or yeah. that some food in particular is It's that you, you keep overweight. sabotaging yourself from some kind of stress type issue. So don't always look, you know, for the diet plan, the meal plan, the numbers to be where you need to spend to all your energy. To be the answer. Yeah. And yeah. then from that, work on the biggest problem first. So, you know, everyone wants to do everything at once, but you, you need to identify what your biggest stress is, what your biggest roadblock is, and then focus on that. And that is one reason, you know, and obviously we're biased, but that's the one reason having a coach or coaching is important because a lot of times people want to try the, the same thing over and over to fix their problems. Mm-hmm. But you need something different. You need a different set of eyes. And we see this all the time. You know, every, a common one, especially with us being a gym and a, a training program, everyone wants to fix their problems with, with, like, with, with hashtag beast mode workouts. And most of the people we meet need to tone it down, need to do less. They need to not do a burpee fest 24-7. They actually need to do workouts where they lift weights and rest in between sets and um, walk more and help create more uh, – you know, rest and, and digest type, you know, get, get in that state and people just overtrain, right? So as a coach, we can see that. We can normally tell right away 100%. after meeting with someone within 10 minutes from hearing their training background and knowing what they're coming from that that's, that's an issue, right? So you need a coach with that extra set of eyeballs to, to, to give you that. And someone who's just not afraid to tell you. Yeah. You know. I'm, we're, I'm, we have a client now who, uh, so perfect example, and she's lost, I don't know now, probably like 70, 80 pounds. And so she, she started, she's like smaller, like five feet, less than five feet, you know, was like 180. She's down to 115, wants to get to like 110. And uh, which when you're that height, you know, it sounds crazy to a lot of people, but that's that's a healthy, yeah, fine five weight. Foot, like, so, but human. then she's been stuck and, you know, hits kind of her calories and eats well. She's gotten that down. Obviously, she's lost a bunch of weight and maintained it for two, three yeah, years now. While. And comes to the gym like four or five days a week and then also has outside life stress. So I had her, hey, you know what? Don't do anything for four or five days. Take take it completely off, and let's see what happens. Now, knowing in my mind, mind and experience, I know she'll probably lose weight because yep. it's a, it's. A, so this is an elastic load thing. You can't even. It's not even specifically saying like training a little too much is the problem. It's just look. There's. I know she has other life stress too, and it's really dialing down to. Uh, the one that we can control. Yep. And, and right from the start, I can say, yeah, don't go work out because that's easy to control. I can't tell her, hey, maybe you're stre- pandemic stress and your kids are at home and they're school and uh, we can't control that, right? So, hey, for now, let's just see if this is what it is. And sure enough, like within two days, broke yep. through the barrier that, w- that she was stuck at, you know, by doing less. Now, and it's not that the tra- exercise and training was 
good or bad. It's just that that was part of her elastic load of stress. Yeah, her total, you know, bucket of stress, and it allowed us mm-hmm. to pour a little bit out of there, and so that, it wasn't overwhelming. Correct. That was the biggest problem. That that was the way to address it. And the average person isn't going. Their answer is actually going to be, I need to train harder. Let me do more. Let me go do uh, some more cardio, some more burpees. Yeah. Oh, I just need to do a, like extend class twice a week or something like that yeah. on top so of what I'm doing. You're literally going in the opposite direction, adding more stress. Yep. Uh, which, and then you would be like, oh, I'm exercising more than ever and I can't lose weight. Or like I've gained weight, yeah. which happens too. So then what happens? Now all of a, and then you may fix that problem with screw this and then you start going to eat more. So then you now you just see that loop. That of, loop that we started with has... And then you start eating more, you gain some weight, then your uh, gut microbiome gets worse. Now, now, so those physiological effects are worse, which adds to the loop, and it's just super yep. complicated, never ending. So don't let your Oof. bucket overflow. Yep. That's so what I'm trying fo- to say. find your biggest problem and address that first. And again, that could be anything from stress management, stress tolerance, emotional regulation skills. Yeah. Like, you know? I mean, those are not the most fun topics to tackle, but we all need to be able to regulate our emotions, manage our stress. Like no matter what, if you are alive, you're going to have stressors. That's Mm -hmm. if you want to boil down like physical life, it's literally just one big response to different stresses until you die. And so being able to manage those and make sure they don't overwhelm you or um, that you can, you know, handle them when they come up, like that's important, you know, and it could be as simple as, you know, my favorite thing, which is just some, you know, breathing, you know, every day, just sit down and breathe for five minutes by yourself, yep. period, bring yourself down a notch. Everybody has five minutes. I guarantee you, whether you, you know, think you yeah. do or not, we all scroll Facebook and Instagram enough that five minutes is super easy to find. Um, but things like that, you know, I'm not saying you have to do that, but find what your, you know, your, your stress relievers are and, and make sure you stick with them. Yep. And at the end of the day, realize ultimately probably the emotions you're trying to avoid or the things you're eventually going to have to address for sure you know that that's the root of the stress to kind of fix that loop and give yourself a chance you're going to have to address those things yeah and like you know whatever that takes whether it's you know talking Mm -hmm. to you know a loved one or a therapist a therapist like whatever you need to do like there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that like i think it's super important for people to do we probably most of us probably do need therapists if we're being yeah. honest. And your so. therapist cannot be food. Exactly. Yeah, that's the other thing. Or that, alcohol. I mean, that's that's <laughs> yeah, or alcohol. So I know that was a, a lot kind of kind of deep. That was a lot, but deeper than normal. That's fine. but it's important. Yeah. I think. Especially and, in the in 2021, you know, stress isn't going away. So So hopefully that connects some dots or makes you think kind of that connection of stress and obesity, weight gain, and realize that it's not your fault, it's the environment. It's our food environment for one, and then our stress environment. You know, we're born into it from really the time we get to school age, right? Now all of a sudden, you got to get good grades. You got to do all these extracurricular activities. You got to get into college. be better than everyone else. You got to, so we're just taught to do stress. Mm -hmm. Like we do stress. And then not to deal with it. Yeah. And if you're not stressed, it's almost uncomfortable for people because it's like, Oh, I'm going to fall behind or I should, I need to feel stressed. I need to be, yeah, I'm not up. doing enough. You know, I mean, you can take it as like from the time we wake up, it's like caffeine, you know, social media, emotion, uh, emotionally charged topics, you know, everything until is, you finally fall asleep at 2am. Yeah. Super stressed. And then the people, the way people know how to de-stress is like dopamine hits, yeah. right? So let me get some food. Let me get some alcohol. Let me, you know, whatever different drugs that's that's so no one's actually in a comfortable normal state of rest and digest and relax it's very hard for people to do yeah it's not impossible all right tackle your biggest problem first that's basically this whole entire thing which i think is generally sleep for people so Mm -hmm. and again remember the actionable kind of the ones you can control the behavior part of the equation really boil it back down to Get more sleep, be physically active. Obviously, that can get nuanced, but just in general, you should be doing something. I think an easy one for that, like just walk. Yeah, just walk. Like if you literally like went to bed at a a great time and then walked every day, you'd be setting yourself up to be in a a pretty good spot, I feel. So like those are two like really low-key simple ones that don't take that much effort. And then make better food choices and eat appropriate portion sizes. Yeah. 
right? And realize better food choices doesn't mean you need to be 100% Spartan zombie. Yeah, better doesn't right? mean perfect. It just means majority of the time make better food choices and be aware of your portion sizes and amounts. Yeah. All right. That was good. Hope that helps. It was needed. Yeah, I hope it does too. If you guys have any questions, you guys, you yep. know, you know, you can reach out to us. Let us know on our Comment. socials. Um, if you have any questions you want answered or any topics you want us to touch on, if you're struggling with something, you know, let it rip. We'll mm -hmm. talk about anything. If you're in the Newport News, Coastal Virginia, Hampton Roads area, come you on can by. Find us at Coastal Strength and Fitness. Swing on through. We'll hook you up. All right. Later. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.